All right, so welcome to week two of the return of the Friday Beer Break, brought to you by the Toronto Festival of Beer, July 26th through the 28th. Joined, as always, by Mr. Chris Schreier from Hi, the guys. Toronto Beer Blog. Thanks, man. Good to be what, back. What do you got, man? So we brought out some stuff from Left Field Brewery. Left Field is a brand new brewery in Toronto, actually run by friends of mine, Mark and Mandy. And it's cute. They're a married couple. Oh, Isn't that sweet? Traditional marriage. Oh, bless you their souls. You bigot. And uh, Left Field Brewing, obviously, it's a baseball reference. And all of their sort of branding and their shtick is all very baseball related. They got a really neat logo here. It's a cool little baseball with a, uh, it's stitched with um, Hops barley. Hops and barley. Yeah, barley. So, Plants. So yeah, so we've got two of their three products. They have three products uh, that are in their portfolio. Um, the one we don't have is Maris, their pale ale, which is named for Roger Maris, who, of course, was the single season home run record holder until that infamous year. Of steroids. Of steroids. Steroids. So the name actually has a, an asterisk after it, which is cute. But we brought in uh, the Ephus, which is their oatmeal brown ale, which is sort of their flagship brand. Now where this like oatmeal brown ale, is that an English style? Well, it's sort of a made up style. I mean, I'm sure at some point in history, people probably would have put oats in their brown ale, but it's not something that's normally done, which is the point. It's a brown ale that uh, Mark's made and he's added oatmeal to it. It gives it a little bit of a different mouthfeel, um, a bit better head retention, and, and also adds some flavor components to so it. So this is kind of like from all over the brewing world? Sort of, yeah, within reason. It's, it's still fairly traditional, although I think he probably does use some North American hopping, but it's a really solid, nice starter ale. We're gonna start with this one. Incidentally, as I pour, the Ephus, uh, a lot of people ask, what is that? Uh, it's a type of pitch, right? It's a type of pitch. Incidentally, Sports. R.A. Dickey, throws Ephesus occasionally. Knuckleballers are known to do it. It's basically a lob, and the idea is that the batter has no idea that you're about to almost underhand a ball to him, and uh, so they swing early and miss. And so that's the idea with this, is it's supposed to catch you a little bit off guard. You're expecting one thing and you kind of get another. So you can see, very dark, dark brown. If you hold it up to the light, you're gonna get, uh, there's the light over there. It's, it's sort of red or orangey in the middle, but quite a brown beer. It's like root beer. It does look a bit like root beer. Uh, and if you give it a nose, I get some coffee to it for sure. Yeah. A bit of chocolate. Some herbal kind of ops. Hops. Ops. Yeah, ops. 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 Oh, ops. Ops. That's really good. Like, you know what? I'm not a big fan of ales. Like, especially like cask ales, I'm not a big fan of. But they t the, that flat, like, creaminess to them sometimes. Mm. But this is really good. Yeah. This definitely has a good carbonation out of the bottle. But really, yeah, silky is the only word I can come up with, like, mouthfeel, where it's really. Yeah. It's big on the palate. It, yeah, not super hoppy, but definitely kind of dry, herbal kind of bitterness. And uh, yeah, sweet, like I said, You could really chocolate. drink a lot of this. This is a dangerous beer. That's the point of this, I, I believe, is it's supposed to be their sort of sessionable beer. Yeah. Uh, although the pale ale is as well. Because like you, you get that initial, like, that initial bitter flavor, yep. but it, it's gone right away. Like the aftertaste is, like you said, really soft and smooth. Very clean beer, especially for an ale. There is a little bit of a yeasty kind of fruity note to it that I get as well, which is kind of nice. But yeah, so I mean, it's not stereotypically an English beer, but it's no. certainly not a North American beer either. Not at all. It's just a really neat beer that yeah, Mark came up with, which is pretty cool. So why don't we do I'm now? I'm putting that back. That's too good. Now here's the uh, here's the time for you to prove if you're a geek or not. You know what a six four three is? The sports it's a thing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't Somebody's know. Somebody's weight. No, uh, it's the most popular double play in baseball, and I can't remember if it's. Third, second, first, or short, second, first, because I'm not a big baseball guy. But anyway, double play, double IPA. See what they're doing there, guys? I feel really out of touch. <laughs> so again, this But I like IPAs, and you made me a fan of IPAs last year. I know, we've been working hard that on that. That Atomic Smash Bomb was unbelievable, and there's this one IPA, it's from, I think, it's from California, San Diego, or San Francisco area, called Green Flash. Yeah, Green Flash Brewery. Oh. Oh, that if you can find, uh, yeah, I think you can get that now. And if you can, it's got those like those citrusy West Coast hops, and it's just oh, it's so good. Give, IPAs are like becoming a real big beer. Give this a sniff. This is a double IPA, so you're gonna get bigger hops. I can. There's a alcohol, lot of citrus in here. A ton. What is, what kind, what is that specific? It's not just a West Coast hops. It's some sort of like well, fancy you, name. They talk about sea hops are really citrusy hops, and it has nothing to do with the citrus. It's that you're talking Cascade, Centennial. Yeah, Cascade. Um, those are all hops that have a, a yeah, citrusy That's kind of really thing. That's really good. Hey, I want to sip now. You're making me talk. And not letting Sorry, dude. Sip away. Let's just have a moment of silence. So I love this, um, this one in particular. There's a couple of double IPAs out there right now that I'm really digging. Fracture from Amsterdam is another one. So many people make their double IPAs really hot. Yeah. They're really boozy. This is 8.5%. 
But it doesn't and taste it, yeah, it at all. It doesn't hit you in the nose. And on top of that, a lot of the double IPAs are, are hop bombs. They're really, really, really bitter, like like sticky bitter almost. In your yeah. Mouth. And this isn't. So it's got a really big citrusy hop, like a big fruity hop note to it. It's also got a lot of sweetness to it, but it isn't cloying. It's not hot. It's just such a well-made double IPA. Uh, it's funny. I, I had, I think, one of the earlier iterations of it, and Mark was like, oh, what do you, what do you think? You know, give me some feedback. And I was like, don't change it. <laughs> Don't change. You know, the, 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 the only double like IPA that I had last year was the Mad Tom Double Mad or whatever it's called. That was a really good one. Twice as Mad Tom, yeah. But I'm still, I'm still a big fan of uh, the old Atomic Smash Bomb. Yeah, that's a great. So that's an IPA. Yeah. Um, this is a double. This is a double. Yeah. So we define double. Is it just twice as much hops? Well, yeah. It's not even that. And I know people who get really annoyed. They say that the style actually doesn't exist. It's, it's like it's just a made up made thing. Up. All a double IPA really is is an IPA that's bigger. So IPAs already are higher alcohol, higher hops. Double is just like more. more and more. Yeah, doubles are almost always over seven and a half percent. They can top out above ten, and the IPA or the IBUs, pardon me, will run somewhere from like the seventy up to I think Fracture at Amsterdam clocks in at like one fifty. What something. is this IBU? <laughs> International Beer U Bitterness Bitter Unit. Unit. Yeah, uh, isn't that ridiculous? But uh, it's a it's a scale that. It, the idea is to try and say how much alpha acid is in it that you'll sense with your mouth. But there's all this talk about how it's a flawed system because it's not um, linear. It's hyper something. something. Hyperbolic. So the idea is like the difference between 10 and 20 is apparently different than the difference between 80 and 90. And, uh, and as well, then there's all this talk that like humans can't actually differentiate beyond about 80. So when you're talking about beers that are 95 versus 110, there's no discernible difference. When the beer robots are invented, they'll yeah. find it very useful. Did you see that this week there was news that they, they have a robot now that not only will pour you a beer properly, but it, it's watching the glass and when it hits a certain point, it'll pour more in it for you. So it just stands there and just pours you beer. I just saw it. On brave the new world. Brave new world is what we're living in. Now these guys are going to be at the Festival of Beer. They're at the Toronto Festival of Beer. If you if you can't wait, they're also at the Beach Barbecue uh, Beer Fest, which is a, a satellite event, I believe, of theirs, which is June, it's Father's Day weekend, June 14th to 16th. Which is the same weekend that Team Canada plays Team Ireland at BMO Field. Get tickets, it'll be good. It would be really good if you went from the fest to the rugby match. Potentially, Just be responsible. Be responsible. Ride the rocket. Yeah, so Left Field Brewery, where can people find them? Their website? Uh, yeah, leftfieldbrewery.com, I think it is. Or bre no, leftfieldbrewery.ca. Leftfieldbrewery.ca. Then, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, the usual spots, and bars around the city. If they don't have it, ask for it because they're good people. All right, what are you bringing in next week? Uh, actually, funny enough, Alexander Keith's Hop Series. All right. So we're, we're reaching out to some big guys. It's a really cool beer. I've had it a couple times, and I think you're going to be surprised. And if you ever go to Halifax, you, you're, not, you're not really doing Halifax at the Keith Brewery Tour. Absolutely. Where Alexander Keith is still there. You just always miss him. They're it's just like, like, oh, he was just in the room. Just, you just miss he him. Just it's just like left. Weekend at Bernie's, though. Yeah, it's just like that.